With that down, let's move on to main topic number three. Alou, what is our third main topic today? Main topic number three comes to us from Diego. Well, whining cures everything, right? Winning. Oh, winning. <laughs> Whining that's cures everything. That's a very <laughs> different <laughs> meaning. That's true. That's a very different meaning. You let them win. <laughs> because the, the finale for House of the Dragon season one is the most watched finale on HBO since, you guessed it, the original Game of Thrones series finale. Not only that, Deadline reports some other staggering numbers. 29 million viewers average per episode, more than tripling since the debut episode, and that House of the Dragon was more popular outside the U.S. than the original run of Game of That's Thrones. Crazy. Insanity. Personally, I love this first season, and it seems a lot of other people did as well. Curious to hear the team's thoughts. Thanks, and as always, bring on the filthy. All right, thanks for sending that in, Diego. And yeah, we were talking a little bit about you know House of the Dragon a little bit earlier. Where does it rank as far as its first seasons go? But now you got to sit back and actually look at the numbers. Because going in, you know, Christian, you brought up, you alluded to the fact that there was, while a lot of anticipation, there was also a lot of skepticism for a lot of people going into the show. And I think even amongst pundits and fans, we were wondering and waiting to see, are people going to come back to Westeros? You know, I, while some of us recognize the brilliance of the final season of Game of Thrones, mm. uh, reality is a lot of people didn't. A lot of people didn't really like the last season. And it left some people feeling jaded. And we were wondering, will they come back and check out this show? Because a lot of people, well, you know how we as fans are online. I'm never going to watch that. And then, of course, we tune in and watch it. We've all done it. Don't pretend you haven't. So we were all sitting there wondering. And then it debuted and the numbers were staggering. And they've just gone up and up and up and up to like bone chilling kind of numbers the types of numbers like the original game of thrones series took a couple of seasons to get to of course one gets to stand on the shoulders of the other but even more impressive numbers this comes to us from deadline they wrote the following all episodes of the series are averaging 29 million viewers in the u.s it's an average uh more than tripling their average debut audience with strong catch-up viewing according to hbo Season 7 of Game of Thrones averaged 32.8 million viewers per episode in the U.S. House of the Dragons also trended at number one on Twitter for 10 consecutive hours in the U.S. Sunday night. Outside of the U.S., House of the Dragons surpassed even Game of Thrones Season 8, making it the most viewed HBO title ever in Latin America, Europe, Southeast Asia, Hong Kong, and Taiwan on an HBO streaming service. That again comes to us at deadline. Again, look at that number. Season 7. As the show had grown and grown and grown and grown and grown of Game of Thrones, hit an average of 32.9 million viewers. Season one of House of the Dragon, years later, almost at that. That, I think, has to exceed any hope or expectation that the folks over at HBO had for this show going in. Because again, even they had to know this was a little bit of a roll of the dice. And one of the more impressive things, too, is that we, Rob, we have to keep reminding ourselves that they had another House of the, or Game of Thrones prequel that they axed that they had shot the pilot, they had all that kind of stuff done, they had spent, sunk millions and millions of dollars into it, and they axed it, and then came out of the gates with this. So Christian, let me throw this over to you and ask you this. Obviously, these numbers are impressive, and, and obviously, they probably catch us by surprise. What do you think was the thing that overcame those hurdles of a lot of negative reception of season eight, it had been a few years since Game of Thrones, what is the main contributor, do you think, to these types of numbers being here? Guys, we want to take a second to thank the sponsor of this video, Mint Mobile. Mint Mobile offers premium wireless starting at just 15 bucks a month. And now for the plot twist. I'm just kidding. There isn't one. Mint Mobile just has premium wireless from 15 bucks a month. There's no trapping you into a two-year contract or opening the bill to find all these crazy fees. There's no luring you in with free subscriptions to streaming services that you'll forget to cancel and be charged full price for. With my old wireless provider, Every month when I opened the bill, it was like playing roulette. I never knew how big the bill was going to be, and it always seemed to get bigger. With Mint Mobile, it's totally different. I know exactly how little I'm paying every month, and there's never any surprises. Mint Mobile gives you the best rate whether you're buying for one or a family. And at Mint Mobile, families start at just two lines. All plans come with unlimited talk and text plus high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. And guys, you get to use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan, and and keep your same phone number along with all your existing contacts. So transferring over couldn't be easier. So to get premium wireless from just 15 bucks a month and no unexpected plot twists, go to mintmobile.com slash campia. That's mintmobile.com slash campia. You'll make your wallet very happy at mintmobile.com slash campia. 
well, I think Rob said it before. Is like one of the, and 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 to couple off what you just said with the pilot that they shot with um, Naomi Watts and everything yeah. too. One of the reasons they scrapped that is because it took place like ten thousand years before or whatever it was, and there wasn't a lot. It was like a, a like a paragraph or two, whatever it was. There was nothing. They really would have to start from scratch and kind of make things up the way that they did for the last season of of Game of Thrones. This is a detailed almost roman history book uh, yeah, that yeah. they had that they can pull and they did and as you mentioned before they had george r r martin so that was a major major factor of why because it it had that feel and that magic of the first couple seasons of the original game of thrones so that's part one um the other thing is because as i mentioned earlier it's the contained story and it's the idea of getting to know these characters understanding because some people thought it was rushed and that the time jumps the time jumps were were gonna scare were gonna scare me at first i'm like okay i'm getting so invested in in like say like millie adcock right now i'm gonna lose her and Darcy's like hold my beer it'll be all right um <laughs> and, and and they're right because it, they, it's the casting it's the writing it's the involvement the involvement is the biggest thing it's like if, because it just it just shows put the time and effort into quality and writing and i think andor shows that also the writing and the involvement of it and people will if they're watching it they'll they're going to respond to it rob what would you attribute this to like a lot of listen with these types of numbers a lot of people who swore they'd never go back to the world of game of thrones after season eight obviously did come back what was that spurring factor do you think that brought everybody back well i think that the world of westeros and how detailed it is. Like when you watch this show, you know, John, I'm always talking about authorship. Whatever I watch, I don't care if it's a comedy, a drama, science fiction, fantasy, horror, I wanna feel that there is authorship in the product that I'm watching. That the people that made it had something to say and they really understand what it is that they made. And even, look, even as much as I can be critical of season eight or even season seven of Game of Thrones, it still felt like Game of Thrones. There was still the authorship this show feels like it's part of the same world. It feels yeah. like what I am watching belongs there. It doesn't diminish anything. I don't sit there and go, well, I mean, it helps that it takes place, you know, in, in, in King's Landing and all that, but it also feels it has that same quality of, even though it's a different kind of a story, it's self-contained, it's faster paced. You're not trying to keep track of what land are they here you're worrying about could ravens actually fly that far and all that you're not worried about all that because you buy into it and i think quality wins out and this show the writing and the acting i mean i love the fact that i think that matt smith is probably the most well-known right. actor but they found all of these incredible british theater actors that have a just they have a gravitas to them that you you can't find a lot on on I, I don't want to put down American television, but they just they look right. Mm -hmm. You know, you look at these actors, and there's an authenticity. You know, dare I say it, verisimilitude, and you never not believe what you're watching. And that that verisimilitude is really hard to do, and it's right here in every episode of this show. I think again, you brought up Andor. The same is true of Andor. Yeah, it's one of the reasons why I love Andor so yeah. much. Anyway, guys, question is for you. What do you think about these? nothing short of staggering numbers that we got for the House of the Dragon series. What do you attribute that to? Why do you think it drew, drew in so many people and was able to just keep building on it? Whatever you think those factors are, jump down to the comment section below and let us know your thoughts.